Item C, approval of the agenda. This is going to approve the agenda for August 9th, 2021. Sorry, buddy. A minute. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Item D, citizens' comments. So at this point, we'll allow citizens to comment, and each citizen is allowed three minutes. Um, they're welcome to comment, but they must state their full name and where they reside. My name is Vicki Strelo. I live at 838 South 199th Street West. You probably remember me from a couple of months ago when we were here opposing the vehicle storage unit at 19721 West uh, 199th Street. Now <coughs> there's an application again for another vehicle storage unit. Um, there's a handout there that you can see. Um, I told you last time that we were here that a quarter mile of our north property line would be affected. Um, and you can kind of see that there. The yellow is our property. The red is the vehicle storage unit, both of them. Now, Jim Howell on the county commission voted no and cited the vehicle storage yard was not appropriate for our residential area, and we agree with them. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about screening standards. Uh, screening must be provided by fences, screening walls, vegetation, or landscaped earth berms. They must be not less than six feet, or, uh, six feet or taller than eight feet. The materials used in screening walls, fences, shall be constructed of standard building materials such as brick, stone, concrete, stucco, or wood. Philip, is that the correct information from Sedgwick County? Yeah, you're reading. Okay. Right here. All right. Um, <clears throat> this is Mr. Hedinger's screening, and I, you've got a picture of that that we see from our property, and it's none of those materials whatsoever. The vehicle storage yard that you approved does not meet the Sedgwick County criteria. No road has been put in place and improper screening has been used by Mr. Hedinger. And you guys helped to prove that. The vehicle storage yard is the, the rules are not being followed at Mr. Hedinger's. So why should we believe that the new people and the applicant is going to follow the rules as well and you know what kind of guarantee do we have that they will follow the rules and do what they're supposed to do we had support from our neighbors the eilerts the wilsons the mccullers in filing protests against the vehicle storage yard ultimately the only recourse is for sedgwick county to go to court and to sue mr hedegar for not following the rules and not being in compliance. And this is the position that your committee has helped put us in. How many of your constituents would like to have two vehicle storage yards avoiding their property? So I'd like to say we protest this application for the vehicle storage yard. And the next thing I'd like to talk about is the Starbond site plan amendment. What are the significant site plan changes? We would like the site plan review to be disclosed to the public for each new building because of the minimum drainage that's been in place and it will have to be readdressed. The drainage plan needs to be disclosed for downstream property owners and we do not feel that the EPA requirements are presently being met. Thank you.
Anybody else at this time have a comment? I got some. Okay. I thought somebody else would be here. Sorry. I'm her husband. I can't understand why there's such a rush right now for this meeting on the storage right here. We got the notification about 14 days ago of this meeting, and I can't understand why the rush on it. Said we think that the time sh timing should have been after the Cedric County uh, Advisory Board meeting, which is not until September 13th, would be the appropriate time to have bring this to Goddard. What you're down here for, last time we were here, you were questioning what what you were here, what your position was. And I'd like to ask you again that what your position should be is as only as looking at an advisory. Keep the fingers off the scale. And I, what I'm asking for is don't make a decision tonight, approve or disapprove, take the advice, take the information, only an advice only. Because we'd like to have a fair situation when we're going forward right now. Not with some, some people with the finger on the scale already. Thank you. Anybody else this time? You may close this portion of citizens' comments. Close citizens' comments. On we go. Item E, this will be approval of the minutes. So this will be approval of the regular Planning Commission minutes from July 12th. And it was just a Chamber of Commerce report. F, Board of Zoning Appeals. This is for the conditional use permit for Belt and RV storage at 740 South 199th Street West. This is in the county. So I'm going to give you a quick background and some general information, and Philip will present the rest of the information, and he'll answer any questions that you might have. So quick background. City receives notifications of zoning changes and conditional use permits and other developments outside the city limits if it is in the city's area of influence. This is to notify the city to request comments on these projects to be courteous of the city's growth and inevitable annexation of those properties. This is formality and these developments can be approved without the consent of the City of Goddard Planning Commission. However, these projects can trigger a supermajority from the Board of County Commissioners, the BOCC, if the local planning commission decides to vote against the proposed project. A similar COP was considered on April 12, 2021 for a property to the east of this property at 19721 West 6th Street and the COP was approved both by the Goddard Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners. Commissioner Jim Howell, District 5, voted against the CUP, and Commissioner David Dennis of District 3, Cottage District, voted yes. So, property location 740 South 199th Street West. The city considers CUP for items inside of their zone of influence. This is for vehicle storage, RV, and boat. The Metropolitan Area Planning Department will receive and file the comments and vote of the local municipal planning commission. The final vote will be held by the Board of County Commissioners. This is the location right here of what they're being proposed. And then at a greater scale, this is our boundary. This is the city of Goddard's boundary, and this is in the county. And this is the location of the property. Financial none. Legal considerations are accounted for the Cedric County, Wichita level, being that this is in the county. And recommendation is that the Planning Commission direct staff accordingly. And at this point, Phil, if you would. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just for visual uh, reference. Good evening, my name is Philip Ziebenbergen. I'm a planner with the Wichita Cedric County Metropolitan Planning Department. Uh, Micah did a really good job of just a lot of the good background. Um, as uh, he said, this is a conditional use request for a vehicle storage yard uh, at 740 South 199th Street West. The total size of the property um, is just under five acres. The conditional use request for this particular case is just applying to the 10,000 square foot area for the vehicle storage yard itself, which means that the applicant cannot move the location of the storage uh, area on his property without going through the process again. Since they specifically identified that this is the conditional use area, the rest of the property does not is not part of the conditional use, which means the storage area actually cannot move. Um, as it, in contrast, Mr. Hedinger's property, he chose to apply the conditional use to the, his entire property. Not to say that he will be moving it, but it was a different taste. But just, you know, I don't want to get in the weeds with that, but just for your understanding that the conditional use is only for this 10,000 square foot area in the northeast portion of this property. Question if I could. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's still 
required that it only be 10,000 feet. Correct. Mm -hmm. But in the original one? In the original one, he applied the conditional use to his entire property, but the storage still only could be 10,000 square feet. He just had the flexibility to choose where on his property he wants that 10,000 square feet. Does that make sense? Is it set, set though? Uh, he does produce a site plan, and if he wanted to change it, he would only have to update his site plan. Okay. That being the difference is since he applied the conditional use to his entire property, he would just have to submit a new site plan for administrative review if his uh, storage yard was going to move. And that come through us or through you? No, it would just be administrative level at the county. Mm -hmm. So but this time it's just for this at this location? Correct. Okay. Because the rest of his property will not be under this conditional use, it's just that area. Uh, the property is zoned rural residential according to the county. Uh, the county does allow it by conditional use. We have several what we call supplemental use regulations, so it's another level in addition to the zoning that the applicant must follow. These are the exact same um, uh, supplemental use regulations as the one before. Uh, one of them being that the storage is limited to 10,000 square feet on properties over two acres. The location of the storage yard has to be behind the principal structure. This one is the principal structure on the property is right here. The house facing 199th Street. Um, the use of it can only be for licensed operable, operable vehicles only. So it is not for the sale, repair work, dismantling of mechanical or servicing of any of the vehicles or equipment. You can do non-mechanical servings like, you know, filling the washer fluid, changing the oil, uh, things like that. But um, changing out a light bulb, uh, things like that. But no mechanical servicing of the um, vehicles. Setback requirements is that the storage yard is set back 20 feet from a residence built prior to the existence of the storage yard, not necessarily to a property line, but to a residence. The nearby residences is right here, and then you have Mr. Hedinger's residence. You have the street low residence here, so they're well positioned away from residences. Paving, any exit or entrance drives, as well as the surface itself that the storage is on, um, needs to be uh, surfaced with an all-weather surface. The applicant intends, there's a driveway right here onto the property. The applicant intends to extend the driveway to the east to the storage yard. That extension of his driveway and the area on which the storage will be placed will have to be an all-weather surface. Um, appropriate sized gravel is considered an all-weather surface, so it doesn't have to be concrete or asphalt or anything like that. It can still be semi-impervious with a gravel um, paving. Screening. Uh, when you have contiguous residential zoning districts, which all of the zoning around this property is rural residential, uh, the screening standards of our zoning code apply. Uh, you got a brief introduction to those zoning or uh, those screening requirements uh, earlier in the meeting. Uh, minimum is a six to eight foot screening fence, which is a privacy fence. Um, they can use vegetation, um, landscape earth berms, uh, several other things that are applicable. Um, if they do use vegetation, it has to be six feet at the time of planting, and it has to be contiguous, so it has to be evergreen. Uh, you can't be able to see through. It has to act as if it was a six foot screening fence. Um, if they do use vegetation of any kind, so if they're using trees or landscape earth berms, things like that nature, they do have to submit a landscape plan to our department for review and approval um, before they can get any licensing or occupancy permits or anything like that. Lighting, if he chooses to put in lighting, it has to be in compliance with our zoning code, which has height restrictions of 15 feet, um, cut off luminaries pointed and directed away from property lines to you know avoid light pollution spilling over. I do not uh, know if the applicant intends to have lighting facilities. Uh, he is with us this evening. If you have some of those specific questions, um, you may be able to ask him if you'd like. Um, and noise, they have to um, comply with noise compatibility standards, which there is no noise ordinance in the county, um, but they cannot have any outdoor speakers within amplification system. Um, those are strictly prohibited. Uh, we went through basically what the um, the last two things about the applicant's property when it comes to screening uh, I did a site visit on there as well as looking at an aerial they do have a pretty decent hedgerow of evergreen trees along the north property line um, if you have I don't know if you got my staff report but there's no, sites oh, okay um, I'll look at my pictures to help describe then so the north property line 
has a pretty solid hedgerow. The east property line, there are some gaps in the hedgerow. The south property line has some gaps. Um, there would need to be screening. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the property line. He would just have to screen the storage area. So if he wanted to build um, earth berms or plant trees or put a fence somewhere inside of his property just around the storage area that is acceptable as well it doesn't have to be at the property line um, he may choose to do it at the property line it, it doesn't necessarily matter it just has to be screened to the standards of the zoning code so there will need to be some updated screening um, with this if again if he uses landscaping uh, he will have to submit a landscape plan for us to review and approve to make sure it's sufficient um, Conformance to our comprehensive plan, our, the reason we're here tonight is that it's in your urban area of influence. Our comprehend, comprehensive plan does not identify what should, should and should not be a pro, an appropriate use. That's why we come before you for you to think about where is Goddard now and where is Goddard going and whether or not this would be something appropriate right outside your boundaries and give your recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. Um, the Central County Planning staff is recommending approval of this. Our uh, conditions of approval are exactly the same as they were for Mr. Hedinger's property. Um, going over them briefly, number one, that the um, storage yard has to comply with all the supplemental use regulations that I just went over regarding location, paving, lighting, screening, all of that. The vehicle storage yard is limited to the storage of operable boats and recreational vehicles only. And then we repeat what the supplemental use regulations said of shall not allow repair work, dismantling, chemical servicing of any of the vehicles. Uh, the third one um, was something we did in this or heading your property, knowing this is right outside the Goddard city limits and that you know the city of Goddard is growing and to be um, appropriate to the context if the city were to continue to grow, we put a time limit on there for a minimum of 10 years um, first time. And if at that time it is looking to expire, the applicant can come by administrative permit to have it renewed at five year shots after that. So conditional uses do run with the land. We understand that. And sometimes you have to be contextually focused to make sure, well, we don't want to want to prove something that if the city of Goddard were to grow around this and this becomes necessarily a nuisance that people are now around, um, that if the applicant were to sell the property and the next property owner doesn't renew it, then it just goes away. And it's, it's something that if they would want to do it again in the future, they'd have to do the public hearing process all over again. The storage area has to be paved with an all-weather surface. Um, sometimes we just list out the individual things just so they're in the conditions um, for people to see right away. They would need to submit a, a, a landscape plan for review and approval um, by the planning department. Um, the site would have to be in substantial conformance to all to the site plan, and then have to be in conformance with all applicable federal, state, and local regulations. The zoning, if the zoning administrator finds that they're in violation of these and the violations continue and there doesn't seem to be any reparation, they can actually rescind the conditional use um, and they would have to cease operation of it. So that's the beauty of conditional uses is unlike a zone change where it changes the zoning and it's changed, um, conditional uses can actually be revoked. Um, some cities actually call them special use permits, meaning we're giving you some leeway to do some things that are special on your property. If you're not going to play by the rules, we can actually take that away. So there are ramifications um, if properties do not come into compliance and there are proper streams to follow um, in terms of enforcement. So that is the uh, my general presentation. Um, I guess I can stand any, for any questions you have for me. Yeah, I think, you know, aside from all of this, if I, if I owned one of these lots on this corner or down the street, and I bought an old school bus, and I parked it in the back and turned it into a clubhouse for my kids, would that be permissible? Yes, because it's yours. And, for example, the current property, the applicant is storing what I'm assuming is his boat. Like, if you own a property and you store out in the county, it is not illegal to store a vehicle of your own on your property. Okay. This takes it to the next step of it's understood that a vehicle storage yard is for leasing things out, basically being an outdoor storage area um, like you would having like basically outdoor warehousing where these are operable vehicles, they're other people's vehicles, they're not your own. So the, the, the real problem could be that you have people showing up at all times of the weekend or night 
Right. However, the on vehicles in and off of that property. That's correct. probably the bigger problem. Yes. I could park 10 school buses inoperable that are mine on the south edge of that lot. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So has uh, the other are the other owner that has done mm -hmm. this adjacent to that property have have they been in compliance? Uh, I'm not aware they've come in full compliance. There has been um, a like it, it's to the point now it's past my purview of it. I'm not part of code enforcement. Um, I in driving by with um, taking site pictures of the applicant's property, I can see that there are certain things that haven't been done. Um, I don't know where he's at in terms of getting uh, gravel order to put down. Um, I know he had the intentions coming into compliance. Um, that becomes the code enforcement as to, uh, you know, and that's for the zoning administrator to determine at what point are you overstaying your welcome when it comes to are you making any progress towards and coming into compliance. The applicant would have to, that property owner would have to prove that he has been making that progress, whether it's, um, I don't know if he has purchase orders he could show, delivery dates and times, things of that nature. Um, I would caution getting too much into the weeds about the other property. Um, these cases do technically have to stand by themselves. Um, we're not here necessarily to talk about the enforcement of Mr. Hedinger's property. We're here to talk about the conditional use request on an adjacent property. My concern isn't about his property. It's about the overall enforcement of Cedric County, just in general. Right. There are, uh, I'm assuming, um, again, it gets out of my purview because I'm not part of code enforcement. But there are those avenues to file complaints and have code enforcement get involved because making progress to come into compliance is part of the deal. Like you can't just get these things and then sit. Like if you're not coming into compliance and complaints are filed, then code enforcement will be after him until he is in compliance. Once they know he is out of compliance, they won't stop until he comes into compliance and then he can be fined. And if it gets to the point, that's where one of those conditions of approval comes in. If it gets to the point where he's just not doing it, the zoning administrator can actually rescind the conditional use and he would have to cease operation. Is there a time limit on that? That was left a little nebulous, understanding as a staff, we don't necessarily know the timelines of how, to, how long does it get to get 10,000 square feet of gravel ordered? Like, we can't say you have to be in compliance in 60 days if it takes longer than 60 days to get an order of gravel. Um, we don't necessarily get sometimes into the particulars of that, but at the same time, that's where he can show that he's making progress, that if, you know, three months have gone by and he hasn't even ordered it, that's a totally different story. So when does a formal site plan have to be submitted and it can't do anything until that site Correct. plan is submitted mm -hmm. and, and approved? Is complete? Yes. So there is a little bit of time after an approval of a case that we work through getting a site plan reviewed and approved um, where, you know, it's not necessarily worth moving forward until you have that finalized to know exactly what you do need to do and where. And then the progress needs to be moving forward on coming into compliance with installing screening getting all weather surfaces down, uh, things of that nature. So we can't store anything on there until that's Correct. The uh, heading uh, property was a little bit different. He was already storing the vehicles and was not realizing he was against the zoning code. And so a little bit different on that one of coming into compliance means getting things put into place so that he can move his vehicles to the right place. Um, this one is different where there are no vehicles that I'm aware of other than maybe one boat. Um, but I'm not sure that's the applicant, if not applicants or not. A um, little bit different process of doing it, the, right? The first time of going through licenses, occupancy certificates, things of that nature can be withheld until compliance is reached on the property. Screening has to be installed. The surface has to be laid. Everything has to be put into place before you can start storing it.
Do we make a motion on this or is this just a recommendation? There's a motion and a second. The, uh, a reminder of the background that uh, Micah gave before you, your recommendation can have an effect on how the Board of County Commissioners will vote. Um, if this board were to recommend denial of this request, it automatically triggers a four or five vote from the Board of County Commissioners, regardless of neighborhood protest. So your decision tonight does have a substantial effect on the possible outcome. Do you want to entertain any comments from the property owner? I think it's pretty well covered, but if, if he's got a statement he'd like to make, I'd like to hear it. Hi, my name's Mark Savoy. I'm with Savoy Company Land Surveyors. Prepared the documents to submit for this. And I want to say that we are sympathetic to your concerns. Thank you. And. Uh, there are absolutely no plans of parking buses or anything like that or even building f fences of some kind to uh, hide this uh, park. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Alexander's here. If you don't mind, I'd like for him to give you a little bit of confidence in what he's wanted to do. He's wanted to move some more trees into the blank places and try to keep it just a natural looking screening, you know, with a uh, uh, landscape materials like trees and uh, uh, you know, we have no intention of as you heard uh, of moving this uh, 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 RV and boat uh, storage area around to various places on the lot it's going to be in one one location on the north side of the property primarily to keep it uh, away from the south because we knew from the previous case once we heard about it that uh, there were concerns there and so we we were wanting to avoid uh, you know rubbing salt in a wound or anything like that so anyhow I, if you don't mind Chris would you want to add anything I uh, just yeah I'd like to tell you guys I mean more than anything uh, just putting the, the horse before the cart and and not getting into a situation where I do something with a piece of property here in town that is not okay with everybody in town or you know neighbors or even the the city council i just want to make sure that i i do things right and i go through the right channels before i do something thank you guys motion would be at your discretion so either a motion to approve the conditional use permit for the boat and RV storage motion to deny motion to table which will effectively trigger the same as a denial Phil am I correct on a table of the, of the, of the yes would effectively trigger uh, and then there is no re there is no second planning commission for this you can't if you table it it'll effectively be considered denial because I'd have to go before Bono County Commissioners anyway. Um, you could also move to improve with conditions where if you don't like the conditions that were set before you of, of the conditions of approval, you could modify some of those and say, we move to approve and we want these conditions on here, like an example being shortening the time frame, um, beefing up the screening. Uh, those are just two off the top of my head. The screening has to come before you anyway. Is yes. That, that yes. Re regardless yes. what else happens. Yes. Screening has to happen and has to be approved by us and has to be put in place before storage can happen. Okay. Thank you. Did I cut you off too? I'm sorry. No. I make a motion that we approve the I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good.
good. Item G, old business, there is none. Item H, this is new business. So we're going to move on to item H1. This is going to be the JAL preliminary plat. So quick background, the Bothman Company has submitted an application for considering a preliminary plat for the development of the ground located at Main Street and US 54. The property had a restaurant and gas station loca located at it at one time, and however, the property was and platted in the City of Goddard subdivision regulations require all new developments to be on platted land. Article 3 and Article 9, this kind of dictates why we would require it to be platted. They went ahead and were going with platting anyway, so there wasn't any, you know, um, finger twisting. And in this particular case, we were, they were already in compliance and wanted to move forward with platting. But any new structures, all structures built who after shall comply with all the provisions of these regulations. Any structure hereafter moved from one site to another site shall be considered to be a structure built who after <coughs> hereafter. So any structure rebuilt or restored after damage by all means shall be considered a structure built hereafter. And unless um, uh, Article 8 of these regulations permit such structures to be rebuilt or restored. And then Article 9, except for a continuation of existing use or occupancy, accessory structures or uses, or additional to existing structures or uses, permits must also meet the requirements of the city subdivision regulations and thus shall not be issued on land which is not shown on a recorded plat or replat or on a lot split or exempted from the platting requirements. Uh, the Planning Commission is considering approving a preliminary plat for the JAL subdivision. Uh, the land is unplatted, must be platted. Current zoning is C2, General Commercial District. They're not requiring a rezoning, they're not asking for a rezoning. Gross acres 2.64, total number of lots are two. Um, this square right over here is, or thing I should say, is, is owned by Secretary of Transportation. This is JAL Investments, this section over here. And what they're hoping to achieve with the platting is to give a portion of it to the Secretary of Transportation, or KDOT, and this portion over here would be uh, designated for JAL, and this would all be a portion of that platting process for development. This would be left for a future right of way. This is what the preliminary plat looks like. It is in the agenda packet. Question. Yes, sir. The plat that you have on the property mm -hmm. is going to be for an access road through there. Is that the the ultimate use of that or well at some point there's going to be a expanding of 54 vs 54 400 and so they want KDOT triggers anytime there's any development that's happening in proximity to us 54 it triggers um, a review over at the state level where they want to try to swoop in and acquire <coughs> excuse me acquire more right-of-way for that future 54 um, expansion so that's why this kind of came to play so sort of a tit for tat in that particular case where the state said, hey, you give me this, we'll give you this, and we'll walk away from it that way. But Financially none, legally approved as the form. Um, it is recommended that the Planning Commission approve the preliminary plat for the JAL subdivision contingent upon final review and approval for drainage by the city engineer. Very good. Item H2 is going to be a continuation of the same. This will be the final plat. Background, by and large, the same. Same um, analysis. You've seen this picture. We'll notice on this point I've outlined this. This is an existing sewer, a sanitary sewer main that's going to be both vacated and removed. They're going to push the manhole from here down to the south. That's why it's not reflected here, and this is the final plat. This has been reviewed both by the city engineer and also by a public works director, and they're okay with it being relocated um, down here to this portion, to this easement on the south side of the lot. Uh, frankly, it allows the city to maintain less, and it puts more um, private dollars at expense for, for uh, so it's a nice trade-off there for us, so we don't have to maintain it. What's, what's the utility easement across lot two there? This one right over here? Yes. This is existing utility, and I don't think it's drained, but I think it's just a utility easement. The water, I believe, right now is on this side, but I'd have to go back and take a look at that. 
Um, but that's an existing utility easement, so it has to be recorded. At some point, when this gets developed, they're going to have to have, if they have their mains in there, but there's no mains in there right now, I believe, Harlan, is that correct? Where is that? This right here, this utility easement? No. There's, there's nothing in there right now. A, a quick question. Did they show a um, utility easement for this extension of sewer? We, we do. <laughs> on the final plan? It's hard, it's hard to see there, but yeah, we, we've covered it in the okay. utility easement. Okay. And, then, and then just for the record, I guess just wanted to, I, I have reviewed uh, the drainage plan. I did um, make a request of the drainage engineer, Boffman, to uh, incorporate uh, detention on this site. Uh, a lot of that's going to depend on what develops on this site as to how much detention would be necessary. So uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm open to going ahead and making that a, a condition and subject to review of the site plan, because I presume you'll have to review the site plan, will you not? Correct, this is in yes. the city. Uh -huh. So commercial, anytime there's a commercial building being proposed, there has to be a site plan. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if they just develop a small portion of it, obviously the detention, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's uh, uh, pertinent to the size of development. It's, it's uh, directly related to that. So I think with that condition, I would say, uh, the drainage plan is uh, can be approved subject to detention uh, coordinated with the site development. Can I add something on that? I don't want to talk about this. I'm sorry, no, there's no comments during this development process. Excuse me. But that that will be in your records, right? As far as right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Final plot for the JAL subdivision contingent upon final approval, review, and approval for drainage by the city. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Item H3, this is administrative cleanup. Everyone else, if you're welcome to call, you're welcome to stay for the rest of it if you want. Or Marlon, you're welcome to call it a night too. We'll stay for the rest I'd of the day. I'd love to, but yeah. actually, you get home to supper. Maybe. That sounds about right. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah, yes. no problem. Glad to help. So, item H3, this is administrative cleanup. So, quick background with the adoption. With the adoption of the rural and urban intent and zoning classification, the city will want to adopt new land use classifications to classify some of the rural land uses previously uh, undefined. Having the land uses defined will help clarify if the land use is considered acceptable within the zoning classification or not. This will require adopting an ordinance that will change Article 2 of the City Subdivision Regulation to list out the definition of land uses. So, the Planning Commission is considering approving and amending Article 2 of the City Subdivision Regulation. The following list shows what land uses will be added for definition in Article 2. So, Article 2 has got land use definitions in there as part of it. And basically, it says, well, what is a school? What is a stable? What is this? And it, it defines what they are. So since we have considered adopting the rural urban intent zoning classification to avoid any sort of um, land use noncompliance or anything of nonconformity, we've decided to add some new um, land uses that would be incorporated in the RUI zoning classification. And so when you look at RUI, if you see a horse stable on there, you can flip to Article 2 and see what is the horse stable, how it's defined. And that's part of what this entails. Some of it was taken simply from the Wichita zoning and subdivision regulations. Some of it was simply just the Google search of how we could define it, how it could be uh, easily incorporated into subdivision regulations. And those definitions have been um, added and they're in the agenda packet for the ordinance. Final approval, of course, will have to be considered before the city council for amending Article 2 since it's considered an amending um, of the subdivision regulations. Um, but small publication costs per state law and approved as the form. Uh, is recommended the Planning Commission approve the amendment to Article 2 of the City Subdivision Regulations. I'll make a motion to approve the amendment to Article 2 of the City Subdivision Regulations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that is it for that. Staff report. So the Starbond site plan, um, we spoke with Martin Haney of Haney Architects. There are potentially several significant changes happening to the overall site plan of the Goddard Genesis development. These changes will need to be approved by the Planning Commission for any significant changes that will happen on site. 
This site plan review will be for the overall development and as each new building is ready to be built, they will be accompanied by individual site plans uh, for their construction. This project is ongoing and several ideas proposed are not finalized, but those that are will be presented as they come online. So the developer has got sort of a big idea of what they want to do. They're trying to be competitive. And so the original site plan, they're hoping to try to amend it. Um, we're working with the architect and as you know, you know some uh, Commissioner Parks can speak, the architect is in the position where they have to try to hammer down the ideas of the developer and the developer's ideas are all over the place and so we're trying to bring some cohesion there and once they actually have something finalized that can be presented, we'll present it before the Planning Commission and then it'll be for consideration at that point to amend the site plan. So whatever those land uses will look like, whatever those ideas are, obviously those will have to come with new calculations for impervious surface runoff, stormwater calculations. The original site plan was already approved back in um, 2019 and the platting was already approved in 2015. So as these changes progress, there will be potentially um, the change needed for a replatting of the property as well. But all of those take into account the engineering requirements, architectural standards, and subdivision regulation requirements as well. So all those will just progressively move forward, but as they're presented, um, we'll bring it before the Planning Commission for review. Will there be a new drainage study done? Yeah, there'll have to be, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there'll have to be. all go through Harlan? Yes. So the... Uh, the developer has their own engineering firm, which, which is pretty typical. We require each developer usually to hire their own engineering firm to do the calculations, and then they go before our city engineer for review and, and approval. And um, right now, Harlan's been working on that for considering what is being proposed. You know, if it is finalized, which at this point it's not. So until they actually hammer down what exactly they want in terms of the square footage of impervious surface, the numbers are sort of just all over the place right now. So until they get something hammered down that's concrete that we know what's going on, then we can consider finalizing what would be required for detention and stormwater requirements, and then we can bring before Planning Commission for review. At this point, we've got item J, Planning Commissioner comments. R4 or RUI or the higher density or? Yes, the higher density. Higher density right now, I think we still need, it still needs to be presented before uh, City Council, I know that. Um, obviously City Council agenda packets, they tend to fluctuate last minute. The, we have a lot of items obviously from multiple departments, so it's kind of at their leisure right now. It's considered uh, non-urgent, non-important, but we are having it scheduled to go before them, but I think we're originally we were going to have it for August 16th, but I think we're going to kick it, probably kick it down the road a little bit more because we have some other more urgent projects that need to be approved. So at some point we will get that before them and then it will get published in the city newspaper and become official. We're, we're trying to knock out one or two of those a meeting kind of based on the order of importance from the uh, joint meeting. So you'll be seeing them through, through September and probably even October before. Yeah. They're all addressed. And and we haven't planned another joint meeting, but we're we're looking at six months from the last one, is it? We haven't really sketched, hammered anything down yet. We're, we might have some council uh, member turnover. We're not sure yet, so we're trying to get everything done first. Um, and once the new year starts, we'll probably consider doing it again, and maybe in June or July of the new year. But we're just trying to figure out when's a good time to get everything hammered down. Usually we see an ebb and flow in terms of demand for projects, especially new projects that start coming online, for example, the JAL development. Once those things start coming online, they tend to pick up speed and they have them all happen all at once where we start seeing a lot of projects happening side by side really fast. And so um, we're hoping that we are able to accommodate something sooner, but we'll just have to see what the schedule holds. And obviously the new year always brings new challenges, so we we'll just take that into account. As soon as we can, we'll try to see what we can propose. Assume the uh, ball tournament was a success. Uh, as far as I can tell, I, you know, I was, um, like I said, I had my wisdom teeth pulled out on Friday, so I was pretty much, 
uh, medicated and in bed as much as I possibly could be, but I, I heard it was relatively successful. I'm, I'm not, I haven't seen the numbers yet, though, and I'll probably reach out as soon as I can. And Did you know how many teams wound up being in it? No, I have. A, I don't have any numbers to present well, on that. Um, we we were there. Uh, Wagon Masters helped cook to feed the teams, mm -hmm. and I talked to one of the promoters, and he said on the the bands that they had. They, they didn't have the scheduling correct. Mm -hmm. And he said that he went around to the people at the concerts and he said to the person, they said, I'm here for the band because the drummer's my nephew. Or there, there was a personal connection mm -hmm. from everyone that he talked to about why they were at the concerts. So it wasn't the concerts weren't the draw and uh, there, there was a bad overlap between the, the final game and the concert, mm. and they weren't happy about that, but they ate everything we served them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can um, follow up and see what the numbers look like, certainly, and try to get a, a more, a more a defined fireworks report. show. Fireworks show? Yeah, it went on for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Almost there. Is that it for planning commissioner comments? Should I move on? Ooh. So this would be adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.